Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 27th of October. India US signed major defense pact back out to deepen military ties amid China tension. At least eight killed in blast inside Pakistani religious school. And Afghan army chief says Taliban has not cut ties with Al Qaeda. And now for all the details. India and the US on Tuesday signed the Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement for Geospatial Cooperation to deepen military ties amid China tensions. The agreement was signed as India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh held the third edition of the 2 plus 2 talks with US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defence Secretary Mark Esper in New Delhi. India and the United States on Tuesday signed BECA, the Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement, which is the last of four fundamental agreements for strengthening defense ties, allowing the militaries of the two countries to share geospatial information, high-end military technology and classified satellite data on defense-related issues. The agreement was signed as India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar and Defense Minister Rajnath Singh held the third edition of the 2 plus 2 talks with US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defence Secretary Mark Esper in New Delhi. This comes in the backdrop of India's tense border standoff with China in eastern Ladakh. After inking the pact, Singh talked about protecting territorial integrity and sovereignty. Signing the Beka today, after signing the Lemoa in 2016 and Comcasa in 2018, is a significant achievement. While Mark Esper called the partnership between the two countries more important than ever, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo assured that the United States would stand with India as it confronts threats to its sovereignty and liberty. Our leaders and our citizens see with increasing clarity that the CCP is no friend to democracy, the rule of law, transparency, nor to freedom of navigation, the foundation of a free and open and prosperous Indo-Pacific. I'm glad to say that the United States and India are taking steps to strengthen our cooperation against all manner of threats, and not just those posed by the Chinese Communist Party. The visiting dignitaries who flew into New Delhi on Monday earlier also called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at his residence. Talks that included regional stability were held between the leaders. Residents of New Delhi said on Tuesday they were feeling suffocated due to deteriorating air quality in the Indian capital. The air quality index value was recorded at 353 in the city on Tuesday, considered very poor and hazardous. Residents in New Delhi woke up suffocating as the quality of air deteriorated further in the Indian capital on Tuesday, showing no signs of improvement. The air quality index value was recorded at 353, which is considered very poor and hazardous as haze was seen on the roads and a thick blanket of smoke covered the skies, reducing visibility early Tuesday morning. People who stepped out early in the morning to carry out their daily activities or take a walk and cycle around complained of breathing issues and irritation in the eyes. Earlier it was not uh, this much of pollution. Now sometimes in the morning like around 5.30ish or some, like around that time you can actually feel the carbon in your nose while cycling especially. Yeah, so it's really increasing. It, uh, it, it was not the same while uh, during the time of lockdown. But Up until September, New Delhi and its neighbouring areas witnessed a record spell of clean air as the government had imposed a strict coronavirus lockdown. 
Apart from the onset of winter season, illegal crop burning in farm states surrounding the Indian capital, vehicle exhaust and swirling construction dust contribute to what has become an annual crisis. In news from Pakistan, a bomb blast at a religious seminary in the Pakistani city of Peshawar on Tuesday killed at least eight people and wounded more than 80, police and hospital officials said. A video shared by police showed the Madrasa's religious scholar Sheikh Rahimullah addressing students citing religious texts on the importance of education when a huge blast ripped through the wall. Police said the bomb contained up to 13 pounds of explosives. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan took to Twitter to express condolences and a short action against those responsible. There was, however, no immediate claim of responsibility for the bombing at Peshawar near the border with Afghanistan, which has long been plagued by Islamist violence. Some of the past attacks have been claimed by the Pakistani Taliban. However, the militant group released a statement denying involvement. French President Emmanuel Macron is under fire for slamming Islamists and defending the publication of cartoons depicting the Prophet Muhammad. Angry responses have come from Pakistan and Bangladesh, where protesters have called for the boycott of French products. Similar sentiments have also been witnessed in several Middle Eastern countries. Protesters in Pakistan's eastern city of Lahore on Monday burned the French flag and chanted slogans against French President Emmanuel Macron, against the images being displayed in France of the Prophet Muhammad, which some Muslims consider blasphemous. Macron came under fire for his Islamophobic remarks following the killing of a teacher on October 16, in which he was beheaded for showing pupils cartoons of Prophet Muhammad in a civics lesson on freedom of speech. Since the beheading, the caricatures have been projected onto a building in one city and people displayed them at protests around the country. Macro said he would redouble efforts to stop conservative Islamic beliefs, subverting French values. <laughs> Francis is a here and he will be boycotted here. And here Also on Monday, Pakistan's parliament passed a resolution urging the government to recall its envoy from Paris accusing Macron of hate-mongering against Muslims. The National Assembly resolution, which is non-binding, came hours after the French ambassador in Islamabad was summoned to the Foreign Office of Pakistan to register its protest. Bangladeshi Muslims also gathered to protest against the publications of a cartoon of Prophet Muhammad in France and called for the boycott of French products on Monday. Protesters in Dhaka held up cartoon caricatures of French President Emmanuel Macron and said the French leader needs mental treatment. There have also been boycotts of French products as well as calls for demonstrations against France in several Middle Eastern countries. Moving on, IT instructors in government schools in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently staged a protest over non-payment of dues and to demand job regularization. Government employees in the illegally occupied region have long blamed discrimination by Islamabad and say they are not treated at par with employees in Pakistan. IT instructors who lead information technology courses in government high schools in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently staged a protest over non-payment of dues for over 18 months and for job regularization. The employees hired on contractual basis blame discriminatory employment policies in the illegally occupied region for their plight while highlighting they are not treated at par with the employees in Pakistan. So our request is that our extension is complete and that we have to get to know that we have to get to our posts and that we have to get to our government and that we have to get to our government. The mounting crisis has left the employees cash trapped at a time when people are already enduring the blow of inflation amid pandemic. For almost seven decades, Pakistan has not just misruled the illegally occupied region, but has also used legislation as a tool to suppress the people of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. In news from Afghanistan, 
Afghan Army Chief Yasin Zia in reaction to the killing of a top Al-Qaeda leader Hussam Abdul Rauf has said the Taliban has yet to cut their ties with Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations. Earlier, Afghan government had accused the Taliban of still keeping close ties with the Islamic State group. Taliban is yet to cut ties with Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations, said the Afghan chief of army staff Yasin Zia in reaction to the killing of the top Al-Qaeda leader Hussam Abdul Rauf, also known as Abu Mohsen al-Misri. According to Zia, Taliban have relations with other terrorist groups in the region and with Pakistanis. Afghanistan's intelligence agency, the National Directorate of Security, has confirmed that al-Misri, wanted by the U.S., was killed in Ghazni province. However, it wasn't clear whether the Taliban-linked individuals had a role in recognizing the hideout of al-Misri. This comes on the back of Russian President Vladimir Putin in an interview to a media outlet saying that the continued presence of the U.S. in Afghanistan is beneficial. Meanwhile, amid delayed talks in Doha, four members of the negotiating team of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan have returned home for personal matters, according to Tolo News. Since September 12, the negotiating teams failed to agree on ground rules that will lead to the main negotiation over peace and stability in Afghanistan. The two sides have held over 10 meetings at the contact group's level over the last 40 days but have not reached an agreement on the disputed points. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. To contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in Bangladesh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government has adopted no mask, no service policy at all offices in the country. As per the orders, no services will be provided to the people who will not be wearing masks. Bangladesh's government has launched a no mask, no service policy in order to fight the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. As per the orders, no services will be provided to the people who will not be wearing masks. In a cabinet meeting chaired by Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, it was decided that no one will be allowed to enter the offices without mask. Briefing the media after the cabinet meeting, Bangladesh's cabinet secretary Khandekar Anwarul Islam on Monday informed that the people at all the social institutions must wear a mask because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Bangladesh had so far reported 400,251 COVID-19 cases, including 5,818 deaths. 316,600 patients have recovered so far. The Hindu festival of Durga Puja concluded on Monday with Vijay Dashmi, the last day of the annual festivities with people across India offering prayers and bidding farewell to Goddess Durga amid coronavirus restrictions. The pandemic, however, seemed to have dampened festive spirits in neighbouring Nepal as people celebrated the 10-day of Dashin festival confined in their homes. Married Hindu women in parts of India offered prayers and smeared each other with vermilion on Monday as they marked Vijay Dashmi, the end of Durga Puja festival dedicated to Goddess Durga with Sindur Khela or vermilion ceremony amid coronavirus pandemic. Clad in colourful traditional sarees, women offered vermilion at the feet of the idols of the Goddess Durga and then smeared each other with vermilion, wishing long life for their husbands and peace and prosperity in the society. The annual five-day-long festivities of Durga Puja mark the victory of Goddess of Power Durga over the evil buffalo demon king Mahishasur. It is believed that the goddess descends on earth during the festival to rid it of demons and bless her devotees. The festivities conclude with immersion of idols of Durga in water bodies as devotees bid farewell to the warrior goddess. इस शोभा यात्रा में भी हम लोग कोविड के जो रूल्स हैं पंद्रह जन लेकर आना है उतने ही लेकर आए हैं और खूब उत्साह के साथ मनाया और देवी से प्रार्थना की माँ दुर्गा से कि हे माँ इस साल जो हुआ हुआ अगले साल कम से कम हम फिर से खुल के वही पुराने उत्सव मना सके वही धूमधाम से मना सके मीन वाइल दी पैंडेमिक सीम टू हैव डैम्पन दी फेस्टिव स्पिरिट इन नेबरिंग नेपाल as people chose to celebrate Vijay Dashmi, the 10th day of the Shine Festival, confined in their homes with elders putting on vermilion mark on the forehead 
of young ones along with Jamara grass considered important elements of the festival. The Nepal government had issued warnings about possible rise in virus cases if movement around the nation increases. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.